Um, and now I will repeat again that, uh, hello, this event is being recorded. If you don't want your face to appear on camera, please switch off your camera. Otherwise we are starting. And uh, yeah, some things to consider besides that the event is recorded is that uh, it's a brainstorming event and everyone is uh, welcome to talk and to brainstorm on the topic. And um, uh, usually we tell people to write in the chat or raise their hands. You can find this tiny hand near um, emotions icons. But today we are not a huge amount of people. So you can just unmute yourself and talk and uh, probably even the third consideration that I always talk about that the time is important so uh, consider the timing when you're talking maybe today is not that important because we are not a huge amount of people let's see how it will go and um, uh, this is for everyone who is interested in learning and development topics, in skills analysis, in bringing these two fields together and see how skills can, uh, how skills analysis can um, impact learning and development at your workplace. And um, we don't expect that we will find solutions to every challenge related to skills analysis, but we expect that we have networking, we have uh, some fun, we have some brainstorming and we bring some new ideas and got, uh, get inspired. And um, yeah, uh, you already have the link to Miroboard where we uh, ask you to introduce yourselves and uh, to write your area of expertise, skills, and interest. It's um, fun how it's easy for me at least to talk about who I am, but when you ask me about what skills do I have to be who I am? It's, uh, it happened to be more difficult and challenging for me to describe those. And uh, when I see a huge list of skills and try to, to, to understand what are my skills, what are not, it's not that easy thing. So this is why we are here today. Uh, and a little bit about myself. I am Olga. I'm originally from Kyiv, uh, from Ukraine. This is why I talk like this. <laughs> and, uh, I am a software engineer by passion and profession, and I've been deeply engaged in e-learning field for the past seven years. I co-founded Workademy three years ago, and at Workademy, we build a learning management system for growing companies. You can follow Workademy LinkedIn page. There we try to put some updates on at tech news and of course updates on this events. We try to run this learning and development happy space events uh, at least every month. And we always pick up some interesting topic to uh, brainstorm on. Uh, hi, Maria. Uh, uh, welcome and nice to see you here. Uh, we invite you please to follow the link in the <laughs> hello in the chat. Yes, and uh, we are now on the uh, introduction round and we write there on the post-its who we are and what skills do we have, because this happened to be our topic of today. And uh, we, uh, I realize sometimes that uh, being able to introduce myself uh, must be one of the most important skills and I still lack uh, uh, it sometimes started, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, today we are talking about skills, about skill gap, and about uh, skill gap analysis, and how this thing can actually level up and impact our learning and development strategy. And finally, I want to introduce Daniel, who is here with me, my co-host, his skills matching guru, and uh, he's a lot of <laughs> no, he's uh, a lot of great things as well. And he is a founder of Much Skills platform that helps people to 
uh, analyze skills and uh, level up L&D strategy. And now I will pass the stage to Daniel and uh, Daniel will introduce the topic and uh, help us to brainstorm on this topic today. And I'm here to moderate and to also ask a lot of questions because this is a very interesting topic for me. Thank you, Daniel, for being here and the stage is yours. We oui, thank you. So I all invite all of you to uh, mirror board. So if you just click on that little link and oh, I see that everybody is uh, in there and working already. Yay. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Uh, so I thought we could just you know, get to know each other. So please type your name, your uh, company and all this stuff. But the, I see the stickers a little bit boring also. So now I'm gonna shout to you. Let's try to make them a little bit more fun. You could. For example, add a color to the background. So you can add your favorite color. Let's have a color that actually works. That is, I do uh, purple. You could add little icons, as you can see I've done. Oh, I'm probably going to need it now, I see. So I'm going to uh, change it. So do that. You can change the form of it, actually. Uh, bright yellow. Uh, you can uh, change the form somewhere, if I can find that. Um, Ah, uh, looking at that, already new nice colors. <laughs> little icon, you can import any image or anything you like, so you can put in little cool skills stuff. What can I import? I should have like a thousand cool things to import. Let me find something. And we can do a quick introduction. It's just so we have it uh, nice here. And this environment, it will stay here. So if you ever want to go back and you're like, oh, what did we say about that? What did we do there? You can always go back. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, you can just do whatever you want. Oh, I know what I'm going to put in here. This guy. Okay. Give me one second. There we go. I'm going to add a little, a little guy here to mine. Oops, sorry. <laughs> My little party guy that we designed. Okay, amazing. So when you feel ready, we can just do a quick introduction in the room, just kind of like what your specialist is and things like that, and we can then continue and we do the questions and everything else. So you can see here, uh, perfect. So maybe to, I can do, uh, we already know Olga, everybody. <laughs> so uh, I can do quickly. I have, uh, we have our own company called Mass Skills. We do skill mapping and all stuff, but we have, I have a bunch of other companies as well because I love to create stuff. So we have uh, like a consulting company uh, and we have like a, a company that specializes in very, very detailed uh, recruitment, for example, via patent databases and things like that. So a lot of fun uh, things. And my job and my super duper skill is to analyze complex data and actually you know, make some order it. So um, that's my speciality. And now my latest passion is skills and L&D and how can we connect it? How can we like organize all this data? How can we make it actually understandable without making it too complicated? Uh, let's see, Eva, do you want to say something on what you do? Sure, yes. Hi, everyone. Um, Eva, I live in the Netherlands. Right now I'm working at the, as a commercial capabilities lead in uh, pharma. Um, but in general, yeah, the past, um, six years I've been working in uh, different learning and development roles. So this topic is uh, very relevant for me. Yeah, especially with capabilities. So I, I assume that you have some big team and you need to understand the skills of all these people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the gaps. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why we create because um, we were uh, doing consulting. Okay, so you know, you have like 50 engineers and also designers, by the way, so two totally different things. And they were selling something and the engineers and the designers got something and they're like, why, why are we doing these projects? They were like angry and uh, disappointed and everything. So very, very important to understand that. Uh, thank you. Um, Maria, maybe? Hi, <laughs> hello. Yes, I'm a, a learning and development specialist slash instructional designer slash trainer. Uh, and uh, I work currently for Merck as a learning and development specialist. And 
doing like that means that I've been doing different things. So it's like from uh, taking care of the learning management system, of uh, communicating with stakeholders, getting taking care that the material is right, and also capability building. And uh, um, it can be like uh, I was interested in this topic because I know it can be rather um, there is not one way of doing it. Like there are several ways, and uh, it's not always easy, although the idea is great, uh, the results that you want to get is great, uh, but there is this thing of how to persuade, so there is an idea of what the management want, and there is, an idea, there is a thing what you want to get from uh, people who should like do their self-assessment so you can finally see like you know to to do this gap analysis and kind of see where the gaps so you can um, actually influence that with a better training and uh, yeah I'm just like I would like to see um, how other people are overcoming these problems so that is the thing let's try to work on that. nice yeah thank you so much Welcome. and uh, Valeria maybe Hello. Uh, so that's my turn. Uh, I'm Valeria. I, uh, as of not so long ago, I work at Klarna. I um, have a very long context in learning and development, and I was working in nonprofits my whole life before Klarna. Um, I am a trainer, and I'm also interested in how people learn more academically. I'm a bit a geek with neuroscience, and I really want to make sure that every process that I set up is designed with the sort of what behavior I want to nudge and where do I want to be at the end. Um, yeah, I really like difficult tasks, but that, uh, you know, when you come and set up the process, and I think that understanding what, where you want to be is sort of the key for uh, making sure that learning that you design is impactful. And out what skills gaps you have is a big part of the process. So I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are, how to do it in corporate environment. Um, I myself, uh, yeah, I find it a little bit tricky navigating, uh, uh, transitioning into this world and thinking about it from a bit of a different perspective. Yeah, I think it's super nice. <clears throat> I think there's one uh, mega trend we think about a lot, and that's like the workplace becomes so complicated, mm -hmm. really, really complicated. I mean, you know, before we stand by my some machine and like you need only one task, and now you need like insane amount of tasks, skills and tasks and all this stuff. Um, I thought we'd do something simple, like uh, to start with, just to warm up. Uh, so I created this titles versus skills. What is best? Uh, so you can like, you can, what you can do, you can just take a screen and put your name on it and just put on either side. So the question really is, okay, um, uh, we vote on what we stand on in general. Uh, so what do you think? Is titles the best way to organize the workplace? Or is skills the best way to organize the workplace? So if you're going to organize the workplace, what is actually what, what do you prefer? So you can simply take a sticker and you can place it. You can even place yourself in the middle. So if you do this, you can write Daniel and you can say, you can place yourself wherever you want on this scale here. Could you help me by defining what you mean by title like a role yeah like your title so if your title is uh, head of l d that is title or uh, um, business analyst or i don't know something so should you organize the workplace by titles or by skills oh and i will remove myself i feel i'm too you can't trust me <laughs> i'm doing this too often with all the discussions so super nice. Let's see here what people feel. Perfect. So I think everybody have put in here. So if we start with you, Eva, like, why do you feel that skills like doesn't title say everything? Yeah. Um, I just think that we should be designing our teams and our organization to be future proof based on what skills are needed and not based on what titles are there at the moment. And uh, this was my thought, even though I think that it's important to have some kind of recognizable uh, titles, especially in big organizations. That's why I placed it there. I still mm -hmm. think that uh, skills are uh, leading. Yeah. 
and uh, Val, what do you feel about this? I think I'm, I'm far away into skills. I, in, in, uh, yeah, I think it's because I look like authority and I like think they're flexible, um, but I think it's a combination. It's not just skills. I think you like when you set up a team, you need to have an overview of skills. I think that's very important, but for a well-functioning workplace, I think it's a combination of knowing this is what are my key competencies and how I could contribute, but also being very clear, this is my area of responsibility and this is where I make decisions. So I think it's the combination of responsibility and skills. Yeah. And um, Maria, what, where, I saw you place yourself in the middle. So you're the, the uh, middle, middle person here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a middle person here. I think both are important. Like it depends like how big is your team or if you are doing this uh, uh, capability model or competency rating for the whole company or you are doing it just for the team. If you're doing it for a smaller team, then uh, titles are irrelevant more or less. Like, you know, they, they are doing like practically the same thing. Uh, and so where they are in the hierarchy is doesn't matter so much. So then you focus on skills. But if you're working with several um, roles or types, so they will have different titles and it's important to separate them because they are going to have, so for example, you can have someone who is more field-based, they need this particular set of skills and you can have someone who is office-based, they need a completely different set of skills. And then um, for building this like, you know, capability model, like it has to be general, but once, and it's also need to be, uh, presented in that way that people can go from one title or from one role to another. So that's basically building capabilities. And that's why I think it's also like important to, to be that it's that the truth is somewhere in between. I, I totally agree on that one. I think it's super, I mean, it's, it's everything is about the company and your specific situation. I think yes. there's no right answer here at all. <laughs> so, um, I was thinking like one example I love to bring up that I often work with is like the title project manager. Okay, but it's insanely complicated role because- It's a terrible um, one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And when I look at the big data, like we have, the thing is like, first of all, it's like one of the most popular roles that we have like defined or people say, this is what I do which is very interesting. Then the second thing is the complexity then, okay, what do you need as skills? So you need active listening, you need problem solving, you're gonna to need to maybe know some tool like Jira, you need to have leadership skills, you maybe need skills to learn uh, how to use Miro for your workshops or something like that. You need to know time management, analytics, process management, uh, negotiation, uh, communication. You probably need to have a certification or something like, it's just like mind blowingly complicated. And you will have different type of project managers as well. Um, I think an L and D perspective is super interesting because L and D, as I see it, also have a task to streamline things. For example, if you have a product manager, like you don't want product managers to do different things everywhere. You don't want the ones in China to do it in one way, the ones in Europe in one way, and the ones in North America in a third way. You know, like that would be total chaos because people have to collaborate wherever the world. So it's like a way for us to look at this, but super interesting. And and yeah, I think it's not so easy. <laughs> um, good warm up. Um, so we can do the the next one maybe. If, did anybody have any more comments or anything? Can I tell, can I, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a host, of course I can. Uh, I, uh, I just uh, recalled a short story that uh, is, I think it's uh, super relevant to this topic. I was talking to um, a CEO yesterday and uh, he shared with me that uh, he decided to check on uh, some uh, grant application that his team was working on and he realized how not so good it was and in 10 minutes he was able to structure it in a way that it for sure will win this uh, uh, grant uh, thingy and he said and I told him so maybe you should uh, start doing this grant applications and he told me this is not what CEO does and this is what I thought when I saw these titles versus skills uh, I mean who defines what CEO does you have a great skill of filling up the grant application. You are very fast in it and it will probably bring 
your company money and bringing company money to your company is what actually CEO has to do. So probably uh, if this CEO would analyze his skills instead of thinking about his title and uh, thinking about what this title should or not not should do, does it work like this, right? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Cool. We can um, we see? I think if we just do like this, um, I ask and do things whenever you want. I think it's loading there. So there are a few mega trends that I think is super interesting that we need to always consider, especially in LD. Like we do have this widening skill gap and it's titled chaos. But then like this career thing have become like, I don't know, it's not there anymore the same way. For some organization, you know, it's not non, it's like it's not a linear, it's not like you know, you these steps, it's like total chaos. You you may start as a front-end developer, move over to product manager. And suddenly you just hate everything with development and you become some kind of sales sales technical engineer. I mean, you know, it could be anything. So there is like a lot of changing. And I think that's super interesting to consider as we are designing the LMD journeys. Um, I added below, by the way, here, uh, if you find it interesting, like this is how I would look at a role. So when I analyze data and I, I do like big data analytics, I analyze roles like this. I put in all the skills. I analyze the skill um, levels for people, being a beginner, intermediate experts on each skill, and then actually do an individual skill analysis per person. This is just dummy data that I put in, so it's not so good. Uh, but you would actually analyze what skills do this person have? Are they fit for the product manager role? Are they not fit for the product manager role? And at what level? Because that's super important. You, you could be an amazing product manager, but you're still maybe lacking some skills, like any human. You can done it for 10 years. But just because you've done product management 10 years doesn't mean that you understand microaggression training or other stuff. Okay, there's some inspiration there. Um, so let's do the next one. Can I ask uh, you a you question there, uh, which is related to the thing which you just previously showed us? It's like, yeah. how do you, so you're analyzing um, a huge amount of data, like uh, which are skills, and then you can determine like, you know, where are the gaps? How do you measure skills? So that's the thing. I looked at so many things. Like it's mm -hmm. a super question. I get it so often. Like, hey, like how I can suppose, I ensure? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the answer is you can't. Like that's a beautiful thing. You can't. <laughs> um, so the EU have a database of skills. There are mm -hmm. 50,000 skills. US have a similar database. It's 50,000. It's insane amount. So you can never invent tests for all these 50,000 skills. And even if you cut it away and say, oh, we only have 10,000 skills, it's still like mm -hmm. almost impossible. How do we measure how good you are at leadership? Because the problem is with leadership, leadership is a competence. So it leadership is a competence, is yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have maybe a hundred sub skills yeah. under leadership. With so different it's, proficiency it's, levels. So how do you, <clears throat> uh, so what is, uh, what is your system? Like, do you use an additional, um, like especially when, when you are doing it within an organization with different roles and you want to capture everything uh, so and to get reports, right? So you can measure it, so you can collect all these data. So do you do it from one system, like using a special software or you are having it implemented within a learning management system so it's automatically connected with the training material or you are doing an Excel sheet and uh, with additional explanation, like, you know, all proficiency levels uh, for each competency with skills and it's like I know it's a, it's a huge document but like you know what is uh, what is the principle oh my god yeah there are so many okay first of all I think <laughs> that um, there are some LD systems that have skills mapping built in but you know it's not it's not what they do primary you know so be very careful with those you uh, yeah I would probably either have an excel or I would have a proper skill mapping system that focus only on skills because remember it's just uh they just add it pretty quickly you know so so make sure you you really look into the skills because it matters so much for a thousand other things the second thing is that when it comes to the mapping of skills and you know setting the level surprisingly people do report a pretty good accurate skill level of themselves when they do it voluntary Okay, we don't need to verify and measure. 
there will obviously be about 0.1 to 1%. There are a little bit, uh, I'm going to now uh, maybe not use this word, but uh, maybe they are not so self-aware about their skill level. They're maybe having a little bit uh, overestimation of their skill level. But this exists already today. Like no matter if you measure or not, or if people self-reporting, this already, this problem already exists. So these people are unaware. So we want to make everybody aware. Um, and the levels are very important. So I can show you very quickly. I will paste in something here and we can just discuss kind of level. So let's take the most simple thing in the world. How can we map the skill level of Microsoft Office Excel, okay? The tool that 1 billion people probably know. Um, so let's go in here and I'm gonna paste it in here. Okay, so I, it's all dummy stuff. So I'm gonna put it in here and I'm gonna bring it to me. So when we are mapping things, there are several problems to consider. The first thing is we want to make sure that people are self-reflecting and are as true as possible. We have looked at automation. Can we automatically collect people's skills? Impossible. Like, can we collect the data from LinkedIn? No, LinkedIn data is totally worthless. It's usually a promotional lie that people have about themselves and is not connected to skills. And the skills that LinkedIn do collect, they are also lies because it's some salesperson that promotes you from some skill that you had back in 2015. So like you can't use LinkedIn, it's like pointless. Could we use somebody's CV? Can we like have an AI analyze CV? Uh, no, <laughs> because people don't put in their skills in the CV. They say things that and they do all this kind of stuff, but kind of super hard to analyze and is not connected to what we in our company want to do. So the best way is to set up different skills and skill categories where you map people. If I would do a super general skill mapping, I would say there are two things you should focus on. The first one I call like essential human skills or essential behavioral skills. These are the soft skills that you want to map. So the soft skills you want to map, essential human skills or key skills or whatever you want to call it. So a soft, soft skill would be um, problem solving, entrepreneurship, or you know how to be that. So you just ask people to self-rank themselves. Mm -hmm. The second thing you add is functional skills. So functional skills would be um, like, uh, how good are you at accounting or how good are you at this or this or that? Then thirdly, by the way, you should ask for because about 90% of all work happens inside a software. If you want to reach high productivity and you want to go to your leaderships and you say, oh, look, my L&D department, you know, we are generating good money here. <laughs> you want to say, we also map the software because software determines productivity in a company. So here I took an example of a software. How do you determine somebody's competence level in something or like their self-assessment? So we designed it in a way where people simply are asked three, like three things. Are you a beginner, intermediate, or an expert? So no matter if the person is sitting in Brazil, in Singapore, in Germany, or in Sweden, they are able to say or understand these three words. Am I a beginner, intermediate, and expert? There, there's a new choice. So you see the different color codes. I will actually say, are you kind of like an beginner intermediate or more in the middle or you're an expert intermediate. So why all this and why these colors and why all these things here? Well, first of all, one to five is too few steps. People feel like they, they, will, they will pick three or four, like it will be too like small. Like there's no growth opportunity if you have only five steps. So we need it to be longer. So we choose nine and we choose three by three because that makes it easier to dig deeper. Uh, for a person. The second thing is that we need to fight uh, biases. One bias is that women will have a tendency to put themselves lower and men have a tendency to put themselves higher. We want to destroy that as fast as possible. And we use this color coding system and this like three by three to make them stop doing that. Then we have the final thing that you asked about, which is accountability. How do we make sure the data is true? Well, we simply show their colleagues. So 
you will actually scale yourself and then you're going to see everybody else who put in their data and you're going to see your boss and like all this stuff. And then like, you will kind of like, ah, you know, maybe I should truthful. So openness is super important in your L and D system, in your skill mapping system, no matter if it's Excel or whatever you do, make sure there is like extreme openness. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? I know it was like the world's longest, but sorry. No, 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 no. This is this is fine. I like this thing. Uh, it's simple, like with the beginner, intermediate, expert, like uh, with the, this uh, uh, providing levels for for each of these three main categories. But what uh, I have to admit, what I would like to have, like it's really difficult to judge, like. What does it mean? Am I a beginner? Am I just a beginner beginner? Or am I just like a slightly better beginner? So what I would like to have here are more the questions. Like if you're a beginner, what does it mean? It means I can open the document and I can write my name in Word. Are you a little bit more than just a regular beginner? Yes, I can put my name in a different color. So can you, I don't know, insert a picture? Can you format a document? And then the final one is like, you know, can you make an interactive Word document and export it as a PDF? It doesn't matter. It's just like some advanced skill that you can do. So basically what I would like to see in, in uh, rating these competencies and, and skills and, uh, and this adding this proficiency level is to see it's almost like a bloom taxonomy. What can you do? Like, you know, it's like, what is the level of the thing that you can do? And that's how you can rate yourself and be mm -hmm. the most accurate you can, because it's like, either you can do it or you cannot. So, you know, and that's how you find your level and that's it. Just, yeah. Yeah. If Please I can add something it. here that I have seen working is that you can um, just define these levels, whatever levels you decide to have, such as you can say that the first one, the very light beginner, for example, means that I have never heard of it. Uh, and then you can say something I apply every day, uh, something I'm able to teach others about, for example. So then you can discover them all. Mm. I think like if you are on the expert level, you teach others or you can teach others. It doesn't mean you want to teach others. Maybe I want to point out. <laughs> Not everybody wants to. Valeria, do you have any comment or something? what is your experience? I uh, was thinking it's very funny uh, that, so in, in my field, we have predefined skills that we want to focus on and they're all soft skills. And we just build a tool for assessment and we followed a very similar approach. I mean, I think the difference is in um, um, scales. We chose one to four instead of one to nine, uh, but it's very detailed. It's one to four on multiple items. It looks more like a psychological test. Um, and then there's also an, an uh, element of uh, you get feedback from others and you get feedback from someone who's superior to you in the set of skills. And then together from that, you uh, build a plan. Exactly. So you do a 360 review. Yeah. So you, you self-assess, you get the 360 review, and yeah. that helps you to kind of like, ah, okay. And, and, and how do you... What is, yeah. what is different here is that our 360 review is based on uh, behavior. It's not a numeric thing, but it's more like, can you tell me when this went well and when this didn't went well? You know, what behavior did this person do where you saw that, okay, the communication skill is was not to the level that it's that is expected or beyond the level that it was expected. Exactly. So do you, uh, so what, what would you say are like your top soft skills that you are mapping? Uh, problem solving, uh, communication and uh, operations. Very nice. Yeah. So, so we would call probably communication and operations functional skills, yeah. but uh, problem solving more like a soft skill. It's kind of, but I mean, it's hard, like, I mean, like, <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah so fair. super nice yeah um so you eddie maybe we can talk about it. we don't have to sit here like uh so valeria you are doing skill mapping and you told us a little bit about it maria how do you do skill mapping today like what is your process like do you have anything Yes, we do have it. So we have defined the capability model and within this capability model, we have eight areas that are unique for the whole team that we are working like with different functions and everything. And we divided that into two main areas, which is business and leadership and functional and technical skills. 
And the thing is that we have implemented that in our learning management system, like because it's like we have a learning management system that is customizable. So it's not out of the box. It's like something where we say, okay, we want to have this functionality. And um, so we build a system uh, where users can uh, self-assess their skills. And it's just like a simple click on the icon and they get a list and they can either uh, something is either applicable to them and they can rate themselves or it's not applicable and they leave zero and that's it. And um, they, they can also get definitions and also proficiency levels for each individual skill. So if, it, if they need this additional assistance in explaining what it is and they can see their own rating, they can see um, their manager's rating, and they can see uh, the average rating of all users who have the same profile as they have. So basically, that means that when they see the uh, graphical overview afterwards, they can say, ooh, I'm really killing it in communicational skills like than the average, or like, oh, I should really work on like, you know, leadership skill, skills suck, like I should really do some additional trainings there. And, uh, and the thing is like that it's just like in a few clicks, uh, management can see also the overview, like but just the high profile, not the individual ones and see where the gaps in knowledge and like, you know, it's or where the gaps in like, you know, which competencies need to be worked on and maybe, um, and they can also divide it by individual teams. So you can also uh, separate whether it's just like the team that it's not doing well, or it's like the training, which is not good and it needs to be replaced. So it really has different levels of analysis. Yeah. I think that's so super, super cool. So you really go deep. So you can, for you, it seems like the skill assessment is important that they, uh, you put less trust in the, in the, um, um, or you, you you use a software to determine the level, uh, no, while Valeria use, is we use, using uh, yeah, we, use, we, use, we use people to to determine the level. So we mm. don't ask questions. I would rather use something which is more like a, like can you do this? And they say like you know this is like yes I can do this this and that. And then the software says good you're a three, and can you do this? And you're a four or like you know. And then at the end you get your profile it's almost like a psychological quiz like you know where you get your profile at the end and you're kind of like whoa that's me and uh, yeah so this is more where people self-assess themselves mm -hmm. and they also it's something like a three, 360 and you have managers and you can compare with your peers and you know you can see how managers um evaluate like uh the group of peers like with the same profile as you have so it's really like to see where you stand from different levels and uh, to say okay so this is the opportunity uh, yeah yeah you can also see the perfect the perfect outcome so it means like if you have like three roles then you can see where so you have a, a project manager and then you have a senior project manager and then you have a head of project manager for example and yeah. you can see the perfect levels right, for each one of those, those three roles, and you can see where you stand there. And then when you talk with your manager, you can say, I'm just like, I'm a free here, but I want to be four because I want to become a senior project manager. So you can also talk about the progress, in, like how you will progress further. Imagine exactly. you, I think, yeah. you come to your manager and you say, hey, now I am your manager. Yes, and you can develop your skills to become a head, like do something else. That's great. Maria, uh, Eva is asking uh, if you have built this within uh, your internal platform or is it, uh, what is this? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, we did build this within the platform. Cool. It's... Super nice. Pretty cool. I love it. I think it's super important to get this like either 360 or some kind of questions or, you know, something. I think that's really, really nice. I mean, for me, I think the key here is reflection from different parties. Yeah. So the individual takes responsibility. The individual needs to control their destiny. And I can only do that with some self-realization and, you know, reflection. Eva, did you have, have you also done something or something you want to share? Uh, yeah, basically I'm working on it. So it's work in progress for us. Um, I haven't done really anything ready yet and um, 
my biggest questions at the moment are as a starting point how do you create your pool of skills that you want to assess and then i know there are many ways either externally or internally that you can uh, use to assess the gaps and then how do the results of this uh, gaps assessment lead to a new you know organizational design if needed and how do you decide if you miss some skills whether this is um, like a new role that is needed in the team or if you can just develop those skills within the existing team so this is where i am oh my god yes i mean I, maybe you guys want <laughs> to share, say what i usually do but yeah yes <laughs> Um, I can say what I do first, and let's see if Maria uh, and have some. So what I do many times, I sit with with clients who are like, "Oh, you know, we don't know." I'm like, "Okay, great." <laughs> so usually, what I say, you know, just start simple. Take your most important roles and what skills those roles have. I mm -hmm. say, like, what roles do a product manager have, or like a, a your front end developer or back end? It doesn't matter. Just define some roles, and they will like pretty quickly actually be able to produce and say, okay, I have this role and these skills I think are important. And then this role and these skills. And, this. and what you will see is the patterns. You can like, okay, these three roles, they all talk about communication in some way. They may have used different words, but communication suddenly turns out to be a very important uh, soft skills or functional skill or whatever you want to call it, that we should have as a global thing that anybody can choose. And then you just continue from there, like creating this list. So you, I will create lists for a role but mm -hmm. then I will start to collate what skills are important globally. What skills should people be able to choose? Um, but maybe nobody agrees with me here. This is like my tip for, you know, start somewhere at least. What, what do you, uh, Valeria, Maria, what do you, what do you feel? But I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like I would basically start with the job description. So basically all these people before the job, what will their function be? What set of skills is needed for them to perform this job? So basically, it's either um, you uh, you do as described, like you know, tell them to write these skills down, or you just ask them to to provide you with this job description. I mean, that means also close cooperation with the HR, and uh, you get all these job descriptions, and then it's like again, like. Uh, uh, extracting the common things like and you will really have their like it, you're, you you will be able to group things like you know based on this like communication skills leadership skills uh i don't know um management skills or um like really different 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 things I, I also think that uh, it's important to start with goals in mind. So what would be the goal of this uh, skill gap analysis? What do we want to achieve with this? Do we want to hire people? Do we want to promote people internally? Do we want to, I don't know, um, um, raise their salaries based on whatever? So, and then uh, uh, if we start with these goals, it will be more clear how should we start I think. What, uh, Daniel, you, uh, maybe you can tell what, uh, when you started Match Skills, uh, what was the, the challenge that you tried to solve? So, what was the goal of uh, this skill gap analysis? Uh, Exactly. Our goal was productivity issues. So, you have, because when you run consulting, it's all about productivity. It's about utilization per hour, and uh, you 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 provide skills. You do, you do provide people, of course, but you actually do provide people with a certain skill set. So we really need to map those skills, and we then discover that software is such an important key. Uh, it is a part of productivity. It is also a way to analyze some suitable for our role. For example, a UI UX designer. If they say they work in Photoshop, we would never hire them. If they say they work in Sketch, we would never hire them. I work with the latest tools and, and think that's fun. Um, so what do you mean you wouldn't hire them if they work in Sketch? Sketch also has like, you know, the, the new additions. It's just like 
for Mac and not like Figma is now like, you know, going to the top of sketch is also fine. Just like, you know, don't do it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, yeah, I'm kidding because, now. <laughs> no, no. I'm like, okay, great. Uh, I'm glad that you know what it is. It is so funny. Yeah, I mean, yeah, great. They fixed it, but it still, it shows that if you, if you have a UI UX design, you want somebody who's forward thinking, who's like constantly exploring new tools, like new ways, you, you need somebody who research. So we kind of use these kind of things as a way to determine. I just send you these two. You can see I'm working this at the moment, but I just want to show you kind of like, here's like how I defined, for example, a project manager. So these are the global custom skills that I'm mapping. Essential human skills are then like the soft skills. So I add like a name, a descriptor, um, then for the functional skills, this is specifically for a development company that I'm like working on. So I'm minimizing the list to not make it insane long, but it's like an agile methodology or product management or research, facilitation, user research, software testing, cognitive delivery, UI, UX, digital product design. I think that this is like how I sit and map it. And this is for the goals. So then I would make sure that I have everything mapped everywhere at the same time. So like what... Um, skills are important here, for example, for a front-end developer or for the development department. So you can actually do skill gap analysis either on a specific role, but also on an entire department. Let's see here, relational databases, non-relational databases, documentation, and things like that. All these things are important skills to have. Um, but this is going to be unique for every company. I think that's what I discovered. Like, there is no end to the uniqueness. Um, and I will soon, we are writing like a super nice paper on how to actually think about skills. Like where do you start and how do you do all them? But, but you're right, it's like so complicated. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's also about the words. So I think that's like the extra tricky thing uh, that we need to look into. See that we have very little time. Um, should we do the, the next question maybe just because it's like a fun discussion, like what do you find difficult with skill gap analysis? Like what, what do you see as the biggest challenges and how have you overcome those challenges? Where, where is it? Is it on the uh, Miro or is it just? Yeah, I need Miro. You just go a little bit to the next slide. I can show you, wait, 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 sure. Yeah. There we go. So what do you find difficult? What have been difficult for you when you're looking at people, departments, like the company? So I can say what I find difficult. Of course, yes, like, please. you know, I like to talk. No, I can, I'm kidding there. <laughs> but it's just like, I know, because this is what I'm doing at the moment. And what I find, like, that's why I'm here, like to see what, what other people are doing. Um, what I find difficult is how, like we would like to use the skill gap analysis for this like uh, mid-term and end-term reviews, right? When uh, people talk to the managers and then they, they discuss like in which direction they would like to develop and they can choose one to two topics and basically talk about them afterwards, right? And uh, the thing is like, I mean, I have 1,600 users and I want them all to, um, um, to self-assess their skills. So it's, it's basically um, how to do it. I mean, they really have a lot of work to do. So now I can send them email, I can send a newsletter, I can uh, do different ways of uh, explaining why is this good, like, you know, uh, for them and why is it beneficial and that we are not doing it to assess like proficiency levels, but literally, you know, that it's helpful for them and for us to see where we like good training material. And uh, and that is the, the biggest difficulty. Then there's also with managers who are kind of like, yeah, I know, you know, I don't need, I don't need a tool to do that. But it's also like this kind of attitude. So um, I think the most difficult thing is basically like to summarize it, to communicate the importance of, mm -hmm. uh, of self-assessment, of competency rating, of like doing the gap analysis, like to everyone and, uh, and then making people do it. So I think what I will do is like in a couple of weeks, I'm going to assign a mandatory assignment to everyone uh, with the uh, week deadline because that's the only way they're going to get in the field, they have a mandatory assignment and uh, then they're going to do it and yeah that's like I'm going to try that that's 
you know, you try different things and just see well, what's most successful at the end. So if it works, I'm going to write to you and tell you like it worked. Yeah. I think, I think that's super nice. Oh, sorry, Olga. Yeah, I, I think that this could be a topic for discussion itself, how to get people on board in L&D, because, uh, yeah, it is, it is really hard. Oh, managers, employees, yeah, this, we could uh, devote several sessions <laughs> on this. Yeah, right now, I think we, we should wrap up. Uh, yeah, sorry. Maria, there's uh, one thing I shared there, if you yeah. click on the link before it disappears. Um, so you have a one-on-one -on -one instruction template that I created. We actually won some HR awards even for it, so it's super nice. Um, so I shared it, yeah, in, in the um, chat. Um, if you scroll down, so what I do, and uh, what we do for different companies, we would implement kind of like the template. So it's easy for managers. And this one is nice because it actually tells you like, due to this research, you need to do it. <laughs> like all the stuff is there. Um, and if you scroll down just a little bit here, stop. No, so there are, there's this questionnaire template and employees love this one. Okay, I mean, when I say love, I think that is this almost like an understatement. I don't know why they spent like one hour filling it in. Obviously, not good for productivity, but <laughs> um, it have very good questions where it's like exactly what you said. Like, okay, um, in uh, now I'm trying to remember a question now as possible. Like, how have you contributed to the team? For example, like very tricky question where they're like. Then they and then they get embarrassed. But anyway, have a look at it. It could maybe help you a little bit when you're doing these things. Because if we help the leaders to do these things easier, just copy this and put it on your internet. Do whatever you want. Doesn't matter. We wouldn't care. Just use it, and I hope it's used. Sorry, Olga. Yeah. No, no, it's uh, it's uh, it's also wrapping up. So as a wrap up, I can say that. Uh... We discovered today that skills are really important. Skills matching is important. It can um, increase productivity at work, decrease the time you spend on uh, learning and development uh, activities that uh, maybe are not necessary for certain roles, uh, help people help themselves to grow to whatever level they would like to grow and even help them to realize where they want to grow. So it's uh, a good and important topic. And um, uh, I would like to thank you for being here. And uh, if you, uh, we we still have two minutes. If you can briefly tell me what you did like about this session, what you didn't like, maybe in twenty seconds time, uh, each of you would be really helpful for me and for Daniel to uh, make it even better next time. Um, it would be helpful. Maybe I can just uh, Maria. Can you tell us what you did like and what you didn't like? Would be good. Yeah, well, it was a, a really a brainstorming session. I like Daniel, all the resources that you've shared and uh, and that we kind of exchange experiences. I like also the fact that I'm not the only one suffering in this uh, <laughs> in this <laughs> thing. What I'm trying to do, it's it's really like I got a couple of gray hairs and my eyes twitching sometimes when I'm like reading like going through the lists or reading the emails when I'm like, I'm like oh what's next so um yeah thank you for um, um sharing the experiences like I, I really enjoy that and yeah I would I would keep the structure this you know exchange uh type of presentation thank so you thank you thank you thank you uh, Valeria can you tell us a couple of words yeah, I, I really loved it. I thought I especially actually enjoyed the size of the group. I loved how it was very intimate and interactive. And I think you also iterated a bit and ch changed your plans. Um, and I found the conversation super insightful for me. So cool to exchange and see that we are all in the same boat. Oh, and Eva left. <laughs> she did. Uh, but she says, uh, uh, she says, thank you very much. I uh, had to step out. It was really nice joining. I really like the conversational style of the session. So I think that's super nice. Ah, okay. Um, she, she has the next meeting. Okay, then I will finish this one. You're going? Uh, bye. <laughs> I, I muted, yeah, so, bye, so bye, bye, bye. See you. Thank bye you, bye. thank you. See bye. You. bye. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I didn't uh, have uh, time even, Valeria, so only for you. Uh, Daniel has... Uh, 
some free onboarding for my skills uh, to offer as for us at Work Academy. So uh, usually in the end of the sessions, we present some offers from co-host and uh, myself. Um, for my skills, Daniel offers free onboarding and help in creating skills and free skill gap analysis. So if you're starting with this uh, or you want some consultancy, just follow up with Daniel. As for us, uh, we at Work Academy, we have evergreen campaign that we donate half of the subscription price to help Ukraine. And uh, that's basically it. And uh, thank you so much for being here and may the skills be with you. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much, you. Olga. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> thank you. Have and, a great day. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And yeah, Olga, we can stay on the call, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. And don't forget to stop the recording. Ah, yeah. Uh, stop sharing and... Uh...